Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eli Martyr. Four years ago, with respect to the date of the shooting of this video presentation, I decided to align my lifestyle and my behaviors with the natural law principles that I had discovered through study of the subject. It was at that time that I decided that I was going to embark on a lifestyle whereby I would eat primarily fruit, almost 100%, almost exclusively fruit only, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about this journey. There are many myths and misleading ideas surrounding the adoption of this type of lifestyle, so what we're going to do today is we're going to help to explain to you and dispel some of those myths by giving you what my direct experience is with this particular lifestyle. I was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. I was raised in typical conventional Italian culture, raised with a diet that included everything. Uh, processed wheat, processed grains, processed food, meat, dairy, everything under the sun. I was vaccinated as a child, I was vaccine injured even though I didn't sustain a debilitating lifestyle disease. I developed allergies uh, as, a result of, as a result of my vaccines, which of course was compounded by the terrible diet that I was eating. And of course I don't blame my family, they just didn't know any better. I developed a passion for athletics at a young age, I started with volleyball and grew into gymnastics, and martial arts, and a whole slew of other athletic pursuits that would eventually pave the way for the career that I wanted in film and performance later on in life. And as much as I was growing into a physically fit and athletic body, I was still plagued with the conditions that were being subjected upon myself by the diet that I had grown up eating. Some of those conditions included allergies. Allergies to cats, dogs, and horses. I also had seasonal allergies that I had to deal with every single year. I dealt with chronic dry skin, and I also dealt with chronic sinusitis, mucus congestion, and of course uh, respiratory congestion in relation to the allergies. When I was younger and the symptoms of my respiratory condition became exacerbated, I had to throw on a breathing apparatus, a mask, and you'd breathe in, well I have no idea what it was, is I was breathing in, but of course it was just a symptom reliever, and I would have to do this every single time that conditions got bad, thus never addressing the cause and only the symptoms. It was around 2010 when I started to become a bit more health conscious about what I was doing and putting into my body. I started to eliminate lots of different foods and started becoming very, very sensitive to ingredient labels and being able to filter and screen out harmful toxins and poisons in the foods that I was eating. I got familiar with different detox protocols like acupuncture and colonics, the use of saunas, and lots of other different remedies that didn't directly treat causes but helped in purging the body of whatever toxins I could here or there. I say plant-based and not vegan because I hadn't adopted the vegan morality until a bit later on, but I did go plant-based because I was interested in bringing out the best conditions of health that I could, or that was accessible to me in terms of my understanding at that time. It was around that same time when I started fasting, and I started a weekly fast of about 36 or more hours every single week without fail. That has never, I've never stopped doing that really. So fortunately I was lucky enough to start getting the ball rolling on my detox regime uh, when I was plant-based even though the stuff I was eating was still not ideal which I would discover later on on my journey. At some point I decided that I was going to cut out bread and refined wheat products from my diet including any gluten, uh, gluten-based products, gluten-based grains, and so I eliminated those and I saw some health improvements once I cut out grains from my diet. What I was eating until I changed later on was a diet that was heavily focused on some legumes, potatoes, and some other raw whole food starches, and a lot of leafy green vegetables, and of course some fruit here or there. I was always an avid fan of watermelon. I made liberal use of avocados, nuts, and some of the high fat foods, olives and whatnot. As long as they were whole foods, then I was happy using them, and I didn't see any, any danger in utilizing these plant-based foods. Since I had seen benefits and advantages from transitioning to plant-based, as opposed to the meat-based diet that I was on previously. Now throughout my years eating plant-based, I did notice some alleviations of my conditions, the chronic mucus and the allergies and whatnot. However, however, I was still plagued with these conditions that I thought I was going to be able to grow out of because of my new healthy lifestyle. 
and I could not figure out why I was still susceptible to sickness. I could still get cold sores and whatnot. I could still have runny noses. In fact, I had runny nose and mucus and sinusitis. Uh, that, that almost never left, and I could not figure out why I was always dripping like a faucet. This bothered me because I didn't know what was wrong. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. I had been told everything that I was eating was in fact healthy, and it wasn't until 2016 when the lights started to come on. And so, it was not until 2016 that I discovered the cause of my continued perpetual health irritations. Even though I had gone plant-based, I was still violating the natural limitations that Mother Nature placed on my body by eating that which is not accessible to my biological adaptation. I discovered that the human diet was just as intuitive and simple as every single other animal on planet Earth proved it to be, and that our powers of observation had been vitiated in order to support a multi-billion dollar food industry that sought to continually and perpetually rob us and divorce us from our natural sense sensitivities and our natural intuition in regards to the relationship we have with what we're eating. So after turning fruitarian and after close to a decade of independent research, the untenable obligation struck me that I had to give back to the community what I had taken from other fantastic researchers that served as my teachers, and so I created the Free Melon Society. What is my purpose in making this video presentation to you right now about the fruitarian lifestyle and about why I created this channel in the first place? The discovery of principle is something that every single human being strives to do every single day of their life, whether they know it or not. When you are a child and you learn a new skill, let's say the new skill is riding your bicycle. What you've done is you've uncovered a principle. Now let me define what a principle is. A principle is a truth about reality. That is what a principle is. It is a truth about reality, the reality that we live in every single day. The discovery of principle helps us to take control of our lives by empowering us with knowledge that consistently and repeatedly delivers a desired effect. So when the child learns how to ride a bicycle, they have learned that a certain configuration of, mo of motor skills results in the successful balancing of the bike and that this is repeatable every single time they want to ride the bike, and thus they have learned a truth about the reality in their own experience. This principle is empowering because now they have gained the freedom of riding a bike or any other type of bicycle-like <laughs> mechanism, and thus the child excitedly shares the revelation of this new principle discovery with their parents. We feel good about ourselves, we feel confident, we feel like we have achieved something, and that is because we have, and that's why children get excited about learning a new skill. In much a similar way, there are principles of health and wellness that are in operation at all times, and the discovery of these principles I have applied to my life, and they have given me a desired effect, repeatedly and consistently. And it is discovery of this principle that I would like to share with the audience because the desired effects are bountiful and plentiful and anyone, anyone would want to experience these for themselves should they find the strength and maturity to venture into this lifestyle. Another approach that might improve our understanding of the best dietary practices for modern humans is to focus attention not on the past, but rather on the here and now, that is, on the study of the foods eaten by our closest living relatives. Given the bulk of our ancestral diets, and the lack of evidence supporting any notable diet-related changes in human nutrient requirements, metabolism, or physiology compared to our fellow great apes. This could explain why fruits and vegetables are not only just so good for us, but vital to our survival. We're actually one of the few species so adapted to a plant-based diet that we could actually die from not eating fruits and vegetables. Humans' closest living relatives are chimps, who get 97% of their calories from plants, and the remaining 3% mostly from insects. Comparing the anatomy of true omnivores like bears, who eat both meat and plants, to frugivores like primates, who eat almost exclusively plants, the differences are pretty clear. Frugivore teeth have flat molars for chewing plants, where omnivore teeth are serrated for stabbing and tearing flesh. Frugivore jaws can move forward and back and side to side. Omnivore jaws cannot. Omnivores have much stronger stomach acid for digesting meat compared to less acidic stomach acid of frugivores. The intestines of frugivores is nine times their body length compared to three times for omnivores. This is because meat will putrefy in the gut unless it is moved through quickly. If humans were indeed true omnivores, we would need to change our physiology and appearance quite a lot. 
but we fit every requirement of a frugivore. We may behave like omnivores, but anatomically, oh. we're frugivores. Human beings, unlike bears and raccoons, and to some extent dogs, don't have that mixed anatomy and physiology that you see in the true omnivores, and thus we are not true omnivores. In humans, the canines have become really small and rounded and actually function like accessory incisors. They're utterly useless for ripping and tearing anything other than an envelope. So the idea that the mere presence of the canine somehow means that we're supposed to eat meat is silly. Why am I here? I am here to deliver a message of freedom. The consequent condition gained by liberation from dependency is always power. Let me say it again. The consequent condition gained by liberation from dependency is always power. The more power that is accrued, the more freedom is experienced and self-mastery is realized. I want to reveal to the audience that we are all like wild, strong stallions that are cooped up in cages made of nothing but cotton, and that freedom from that cage can be attained at any time of your choosing. You just have to decide to break out of your cotton and easily broken out of cage. I am offering freedom from the overwhelming, time-consuming, confusing, wasteful, and pathological lies of food culture. What if I told you that you could be just as satisfied and just as fulfilled with your eating? What if I told you that I could empower you with the freedom to never have to spend any more time in the kitchen slaving and preparing over food ever, ever again? What if I told you that you would never miss out on all of the time that you spent laboring in the kitchen unnecessarily and that you would be perfectly fulfilled without a fraction of that time wasted? What if I told you that your health would dramatically improve in ways that you did not think were possible when you were eating a conventional, cooked, adulterated, vitiated diet? What if I told you that you could simplify your life immeasurably? All of these things are more than just possible should you follow the proper lifestyle. Now, the vast majority of what we're told about food is either misleading or a complete lie. And as of the making of this video, there are still many myths that surround the adoption of a fruit-based lifestyle. One of those myths that is most deleterious to our thinking is the idea that fruit is simply a codicil. It's just a supplement to be added to an artificial diet. We've been convinced that the food that man was born to eat is relegated to the status of simply a convenient snack or maybe some window dressing on a stimulating diet of cooked food and other substances that were never meant to go into the human physiology. Our obsession with nutrition and individual microscopic nutrients has crippled our thinking and caused us to dismiss fruit as a viable diet because it is not as calorically and nutritionally dense and concentrated as other elements found in the diet. One of the most pervasive myths resulting from this nonsensical belief is that physical health suffers without the overburdening density of conventional food, and that athletics and physical prowess cannot be maintained on a minimalistic fruit diet. Well, unfortunately for the vast majority of people holding this belief, I stand in stark defiant rebuttal of this misconception, empowered by the crushing force of direct and lengthy personal experience. Can't be fit, can't be healthy, can't be strong, can't put on or maintain muscle? Well, I guess the following is just my rampant imagination. Now, despite my active lifestyle and noticeable health improvements over time sticking to a natural eating lifestyle, 
I and you can expect to be continually beset with waves of uninformed opinions on whether a natural eating lifestyle is healthy. Uh, you're going to get friends and family alike urging you to reconsider your obviously healthier choices. <laughs> I have had numerous episodes of people with lifestyle related diseases and conditions caution me about living in harmony with one's biological endowments. And as you can imagine, the irony in this is thick enough to be bulletproof. But of course, the world has not placed good information at the forefront of cursory searches, and so you can't blame these people. It, it, but in dealing with uninformed opinions, you know, you simply had to do what you would naturally do. In the absence of anything compelling, you simply ignore and move on. <laughs> Several months ago, my brother approached me with concern on his voice, and he said I should really, really consider adding nuts and seeds to my diet. You know, you could tell he was very concerned. Now, of course, the reasons provided for this concern are very easily countered, which I did provide. And I, I guess he imagined that after years of study in natural law, esoteric science, natural hygiene, holistic healing, that the idea of nuts and seeds had somehow escaped my consideration. Um, most people are coming from a conventional understanding of the conditions and needs of the average body subjected to the normal amount of concentrated dead food in the diet. You know, most people don't understand the law of efficiency and how the body acts always to do the most benefit for the least effort. Most benefit for the least effort. If dense concentrated foods are eaten daily, well, the body will have no need to be as efficient with absorption. If what is eaten is simple, the body's efficiency is enhanced considerably and there is no need for such concentrated items because the body is more than capable of getting what it needs from far, far less. But, you know, anyhow, I'm, I'm going off topic and there's much more to say on that front, but maybe for another time. Nuts and seeds are great. They're a natural food. They don't need any processing to be eaten. They have many uses for many people. Are they necessary? No, not with a natural diet of fruit and leafy greens, if desired. For the purposes of self-development, for improvements in my health, and for furthering my spiritual evolution, and of course for the education of all my peers who I have access in reaching, I took on this path, I took on this journey. And I've also put my body through many challenges and experiments in order to show everyone what is in fact possible. I have had periods of several monofruit diets including several weeks on just bananas, including a month of just grapes, including weeks on just tomatoes, weeks on just melons. I've done water fasts of 5 days, 10 days. I've done a water fast of 32 days. I've done a week-long dry fast, no food or water. I've done a 10-day dry fast, no food or water. I've done several periods on just liquids, a week, two weeks, three weeks. I've been 90 days on just liquids. In fact, as of right now, I've been 30 days on just liquids. In a state of higher bodily cleanliness, I have tested and I've gone back and tried and experimented with other foods that I used to eat that I thought were healthy to assess and gauge the, the reaction in my body. And every single time, it is a noticeable step back in terms of how I feel, the weightiness and the heaviness of the body, the mucus congestion that irrevocably follows every single time I decide to break the law and limitations of my body. What kinds of healing did I experience throughout this journey and what kinds of healing can you too also expect should you undertake something similar? Little nagging pains that might reside deep in your joints that you figure you just have to live with that don't really do anything to impair the overall quality of your life but you feel you just have to live with, those can start to go away, break down. I had bad wrist pain by virtue of being a gymnast that broke apart and went away with some fasting and some proper diet. My chronic congestion and sinusitis went away completely. Now I no longer have mucus, ever. I can breathe in and out with clean tubes, clean pipes every single day without fail. Clean pipes. No matter what I do, I cannot produce mucus because there is no necessity for my body to generate that mucus because the diet is clean. I noticed rapid weight loss. Almost immediately I lost 12 pounds or so, 11 pounds within my first two weeks of being fruitarian. Was I overweight? Was I fat? 
Never. I was big, strong, ripped, defined, lean, just a, just a very, very healthy looking guy. So where did this weight loss come from? It came from the waste products that I was harboring inside my body, inside the tissue of my, my muscles, my neck, my everywhere. And of course the rotting material inside my gut, this all started to get fumigated and purified from my system and thus the weight loss was experienced. If you are eating a conventional diet that includes either cooked foods or animal products of any capacity, you have no idea how much your body actually weighs because you are carrying at least 15 to 20 pounds of extra garbage, riffraff, rotting material, diseased material, latent disease, latent illness in your body, you are carrying that. Smells and odors become a thing of the past. I have no need for any deodorant ever. Toilet odors and bowel movements, the smells that we typically associate with those things, that becomes something completely different. Now your bowel movements never smell. So feel free to go to that high class party, go to the washroom when the washroom is packed and have as much bowel movement as you want and you will not smell up the place one iota. Allergies went away, so now I can be around the cats and dogs without any sort of irritation or congestion. My joints and muscles were flexible without having to do much flexibility training at all. I have very minimal maintenance to do and I can still retain fantastic flexibility just because I'm not poisoning my body every single day. You develop outrageous efficiency in your body. You can go for long periods without food and even without water and feel utterly fantastic. No headaches, no detox symptoms, no anything that people associate with the deprivation from food. You become absolutely impervious to sickness. I have yet to experience one single sick day. I I'm not even a sick day. I have yet to experience one day of feeling even kind of under the weather. The days of occasionally feeling sick will become a distant memory to you if you decide to embark on the same path. You may stand utterly fearless in the face of the irrational fear that we've constructed around viruses and bacteria. And of course, viruses and bacteria are simply benevolent agents in your own body. And contracting them will do absolutely nothing to you so long as they don't have a job to do by breaking down dead and, di and diseased material inside your body. You will also lose your craving for awful and unnatural food. You will never need highly stimulating seasonings and spices. Your taste buds will regulate, so now they become more sensitive to the simple and natural flavors that nature provides. You too can experience all of these things that I have experienced simply by putting into action principles that create the conditions of the body and of the mind that inevitably result in the desired effect. Yes, there may be other considerations for each individual person as the healing journey varies from person to person. Sometimes the damage that we have done needs more focused attention than simply the removal of the cause that damaged the organ or the body in the first place and now extra measures might have to be implemented in order to expedite the healing of that organ or that gland or the body in general. But by and large, simply by removing the cause of encumbrance in the system, by adopting a lifestyle of eating living foods only, will result in your health taking off to levels that you did not know were possible. What are the implications? What are the downsides of adopting a diet of raw living foods only? No cooked foods, no adulterated foods, no processed foods, no meat and dairy, no any of it, just raw living foods. What are the downsides? Yes, there are downsides. You will not fit into the societal norms anymore. The downside is, is that you must have the discipline and maturity to see through a period of detoxification and breakdown. Mother Nature does not operate in such a silly way as to build new tissue on rotting and old foundation. What she does is she breaks things down first so that the new can be constructed on healthier tissue. Most people who attempt this lifestyle do not give it enough time. They live for 20, 30, 40, 50 years absolutely abusing their bodies and then they expect in three months, four months, five months, six months that their body is just going to magically heal from the abuse of countless decades. This is not how it works. You must, must, must be willing and expect a period of breakdown, a period of weakness, a period of repair and renovation in the body. This can manifest itself in many different ways. It can express itself in many different ways. Yes, I did have to go through a period where I was not as physically able. Yes, I did have to go through a period where I became weaker, less energetic. Yes, this was necessary. Have you ever renovated a room in your house? 
during the renovation period, was the house not in complete disarray and complete chaos? Was it not unusable? Was it not suitable for the public? The renovation of a room in your house is a perfect analogy for what your body has to go through. When your body is renovating, when it has been given the time and the energy necessary to renovate, it breaks down and things can potentially be a bit more chaotic than they previously were. However, at the other end of the renovation, you gain the benefit of the newly renovated room that looks and operates better. I gave a story earlier about being urged to eat nuts and seeds. Um, this is another drawback. As you eat simply and plainly of the very foods that bring the most life and vitality, somehow you will have people that are eating <sighs> heated oils that cause carcinogenic compounds to flood the system, uh, cooked in highly heated starches that cause acrylamide formation and result in a massive immune response to every single cooked meal. Uh, these people are eating cooked carcasses and cooked animal secretions that pollute the blood and tissues with uric acid crystals, cholesterol, unnecessary cholesterol, ammonia, bacterial putrefactive byproducts like tomines and phenols and sulfuric acid and so on. These people are also adding to these meals highly stimulating spices and seasonings to further complicate the nightmarish bog that's attempted to be digested. Salt, pepper, and then every single other stimulating spice that serves to disguise and hide the actual taste of what the food would really be in a natural situation. Coffee, tea, alcohol, red wine with the meal? Sure, why not? Just add more and more complications. Dilute those stomach acids so that you can even less effectively digest whatever that nightmarish bog consists of. It, people that eat this way will be the ones to caution you against the dangers of eating your simple raw salad and fruit. You must have the maturity of mind to understand that you are adopting a new lifestyle because you want your health and wellness and your mental and your spiritual well-being to take off in the upward direction. And you cannot do this with a simple cleanse. But should you find the strength to break free of the cultural shackles, should you discover that wellspring of confidence that comes from discovering principle and make the appropriate applications in your life, I promise you that you will develop physical and mental well-being that simply is not possible in a conventional diet of cooked, adulterated, or processed foods and meat products. So in the future, when you hear these lies being promulgated in the culture around you, when you hear the experts telling you to avoid fruit because of its high sugar content, let me be your defense against these mistruths. Share this video with them and say, nope, here you go, this guy's already doing it. That is why I am sharing this message with you, ladies and gentlemen, because I want to share, I want to empower you with the potential for freedom. Freedom from the cultural contraptions that we were once so firmly affixed to. You too can conduct your diet as blissfully and peacefully as you see the cows in the pasture doing. You can approach your diet with as much intuitive sense as the chipmunks and the squirrels just eating nuts all day and never ever worrying about their nutrition because they know what is meant for their bodies. This is possible and I know because I'm doing it every single day and I have been doing it for four years now as per the making of this video. You owe this to yourself, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope that this video can serve as at least a little bit of inspiration to take your health and wellness to the next level by adopting a clean human diet. I love you very much, my dear listeners. Thank you for giving me the time of day, and God bless.